What's going on, Vegas Golden Knights fans? Thanks for tuning in to episode 25 of the VGK Bug Eye Guy podcast. My name's Nick, and welcome. Happy 2019 to all my fellow Vegas Golden Knights fans. And if you're just an NHL fan or a hockey fan, or you just like the VGK Bug Eye Guy, well, Happy New Year. Did you guys all do something fun for New Year's Eve? Well, for the Bug Eye Guy... Uh, stayed home and watched the fireworks from the Las Vegas Strip on the TV. Woke up the wife, said, hey, Happy New Year. She said, Happy New Year, went back to bed. And that was kind of it. So it wasn't super eventful, but hey, congratulations, everyone listening to this podcast. You survived 2018. Might have been good for some of you, might have been bad for some of you, but guess what? That's in the past. But welcome. Welcome to a new year. So what's on tap for episode 25 of the podcast? Well, couple things I want to talk about at the top of the show. A couple changes coming. And I might as well go ahead and start off with the first one. The first one is um, social media. So the Bug Eye Guy has some plans for social media this year. I'm going to change it up a little bit. I'm uh, I'm kind of tired of the, the Facebook thing. I'm still going to use it. But uh, I'm going to kind of push more over towards the podcast and more over towards um, Instagram has a, uh, a platform that is growing at a rapid rate. So I'm going to be uh, shifting more of my post over to Instagram. The cool thing about Instagram is... I post on there and I click the little button at the bottom, it automatically posts to the VGK Bug Eye Guy page on Facebook. So it's kind of a win-win. Another thing that I'm going to be doing, and I'm going to need you guys' help with this. I put a Facebook post out yesterday. I'll put one out on Instagram later today. The VGK Bug Eye Guy podcast. That's the name of the podcast since I started. This, of course, is the 25th episode of the podcast. I've spent a long time, you know, trying to hone my skills a little bit because honestly, I'm not an audio engineer. I'm just a normal dude. I'm a, I'm a Vegas Golden Knights fan that likes talking Vegas Golden Knights. I'm a, I'm a regular dude with a regular job. So this is all stuff I do on the spare for fun. But over the last six months or so, you know, I've gotten a little bit better. I've learned some tricks, watched some YouTube videos, talked to some friends, go, hey, how do I make this a little bit better? What software do I need? And the bottom line is I'm 25 episodes in. If you go back and listen to episode one of the VGK Bug Eye Guy podcast, there's a huge difference between then and now and sound quality, and little extras that I add in. And again, I'm just starting. This is only the 25th episode. I'm hoping by the 50th episode that it's going to be even better. But here's my dilemma, folks. The VGK Bug Eye Guy, which is the name that I came up with last season when I was using Snapchat filters and doing funny uh, face filters. I like the VGK Bug Eye Guy. That's my name. I'm I'm not changing my name, but what I need to change is the name of my podcast. You see, the way it works in search engine optimization out there, all this fancy stuff of how when you go to Google, the stuff you really want to look at shows up. All about hashtags and, and search engine optimization, SEO. Well, the problem is nobody that's a, a hockey fan or a Vegas Golden Knights fan or an NHL fan that wants to search for a podcast, maybe maybe a Toronto Maple Leafs fan wants to listen to a podcast from a Vegas Golden Knights guy because Toronto's about to play Vegas. Right? It, it makes sense. The problem is I can't get anybody to search the VGK Bug Eye Guy podcast because other than the word VGK, uh, which could be anything, I just I don't rank. So the problem is, is I need to change the name to something more hockey related. Well, there's a problem with that because it's very hard to come up with the name. So what I did was I reached out to some friends and family as well as did a social media post and said, hey, I'm a Vegas Golden Knights podcaster. You guys know that because you're listening right now. But we need to have a better name in order to get it out there. But I don't know, like Pucking Vegas or see, I really like Pucking Vegas. The problem is it sounds like Fucking Vegas. And then uh, this is the VGK Bug Eye Guy from PuckingVegas.com. And they're going to go, excuse me, what'd you say? I said, yeah, Fucking Vegas, Pucking Vegas. I can't do it. I like it. I think it's funny, but it doesn't work. So if you guys have any awesome ideas for a name of this podcast, if you give me a kick ass name that I end up using, I will give you something in return. I don't know what it is. I got a couple extra pucks lying around, some posters. I don't know. Reach out to me on social media at VGK Bug Eye Guy. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on Instagram. I'm even on YouTube. Reach out to me. Just throw me a comment on any video you come across or any picture and go, hey, Bug Eye Guy, you should name your podcast this. I would really appreciate it. And I'm honestly going to use input from my fans to come up with a cool name. Either way, I'm hoping by next episode, episode 26, I'll have a new name. And then, of course, the artwork and the logos and stuff's going to take some time. But hey, it is what it is. So, Thank you. That's my plans for 2019. I'm going to still be doing the weekly podcast. I'm going to do it on Podcast Monday. Uh, just, just know that it might be Podcast Monday morning or Podcast Monday evening. It depends on the Vegas Golden Knights schedule. It depends on the Bug Eye Guy's schedule. It depends on the Bug Eye Wife's schedule. You guys know where I'm going with this. So just 
Look for new episodes every Monday. And of course, if I'm on vacation or if something comes up, I will reach out on all social media platforms to let you know there won't be an episode. So what went on last week? Well, we had a New Year's game against the stupid Los Angeles Kings and Drew Doughty and Anze Kopitar coming to the Fortress. Now, coming to the Fortress, we were 0-1-1 against them. We did beat them down in their house, so 1-1-1 with them coming in. Talk more about that Kings game later on in the podcast. Uh, let's see, we went on the road and took on the stupid Anaheim Ducks, and you get where I'm going with this stupid, right? And I usually only use that, and if there's any kids listening, stupid is not a nice word, but the bug eye guy likes to use it when I'm talking about the stupid Calgary Flames, stupid San Jose Sharks, stupid Anaheim Ducks, stupid Los Angeles Kings. Yeah, I'm kind of biased towards Pacific Division teams because I've always been a West Coast kid. I've always watched West Coast hockey. So all the other Pacific Division teams, y'all suck. Y'all stupid. And that's just because I'm the bug eye guy, and that's how I feel, and that's how it is. So, to top off this week's games in this episode of the podcast, we finished up with the battle, really a rematch from the December 14th uh, overtime, a uh, big lead debacle against the New Jersey Devils. Well, the Devils came back to the Fortress, and they took on our Vegas Golden Knights at our house. So those three games we're going to talk about here later on in the podcast. we got some post-game interviews I'm going to add to this podcast so you guys can hear from the players. Let's see, what else we got? Uh, about a couple roster moves. I'll get into depth a little bit about the whole Brandon Perry situation. Although, honestly, by now, everybody should be kind of schooled on the Brandon Perry situation. And then we claimed a player off of waivers last week, Valentin Zykov. Now, he's a Los Angeles Kings draft pick that's bounced around. He did lead the league in scoring last year. Well, the AHL, of course. But So he has shown signs of greatness, but will it translate to the NHL level? Is the Vegas Golden Knights willing to give him a chance? Uh, if you asked me last week in my podcast last week, I didn't really think so, but maybe it, maybe they are going to give him a chance. Maybe the good thing about him is he's young. And other than Alex Tuck and Shea Theodore, a lot of our guys aren't that young. So maybe this was a steal. Maybe this was another Ryan Carpenter, Malcolm Subban steal where GM, GM McPhee grabs a good player, a good, young, talented player off of waivers. Now we're still going to lose somebody on waivers or we're going to make a trade. It's going to happen. The numbers don't add up. But again, We'll talk about all those three games and the players just a little bit. But first, I wanted to start out the podcast with a an annual review. So we're halfway through the season. To date, the Vegas Golden Knights have played 45 NHL games this season. And we've got a record of 26-15-4, tied for first in the Pacific Division with 56 points. Of course, Calgary still has two games at hand. And for you new hockey fans that don't understand this, two games at hand means we've played two games more than they have. So if we don't play for two days and they play two days and they get two wins, they get four more points. We're four points behind them. I don't understand why people still don't understand that, but there. So you Vegas Golden Knights fans listening to the VGK Bug Eye Guy podcast, you're now schooled on how games at hand work. All right, so uh, late last week, the Bug Eye Guy decided to do a Bug Eye Guy filter video. Now, I've kind of gone away from the Bug Eye Guy filter videos and focused mostly on the podcast and just social media posts. Because honestly, the filter videos take a long time. There are a lot of work to use that stupid filter and make it look halfway decent. And But I figured, you know what? We're halfway through the season. I haven't really done too many Bug Eye Guy videos. I'm going to throw one out there. So what I did is I went down to the park right around the corner from my house. And I filmed a roughly 12-minute video about kind of what's been going on since the beginning of the season until now for the Vegas Golden Knights. It's kind of a, a recap video with some humor and some, uh, I don't know, it was, it was okay. But I wanted to do a quick recap portion on the podcast. Now, honestly, I spent all that time just last week recording the video. So the bug eye guy is sitting here going, well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take the audio from that video and I'm going to add it to the podcast. So right now, folks, sit back for about the next 12 minutes, if you have the time, which you do because you're listening to the podcast because you love me. This is the audio from the video I uploaded to social media and YouTube about the uh, Vegas Golden Knights uh, midseason review. Starts from the beginning of the season, talks about a bunch of random things. I kind of bounce all over the place. But uh, go ahead and enjoy this, and I'll see you on the backside. What's going on, Vegas? Golden Knights fans. That's right, the VGK bug eye guy is back. Now, I know some of you are like, oh, cool, bug eye guy, where have you been? And I know some of you are like, oh, man, the freaking bug eye guy's back. Ugh. Honestly, folks, I've kind of gotten out of the whole video game. It takes a lot of time, and I've been focusing mostly on the VGK Bug Eye Guy podcast. It's available at VGKBugEyeGuy.com, 
along with all the major podcast providers like Apple and Google. You should check it out sometime. So, we're halfway through the regular season. And I figured, man, the bug eye guy probably should do a little recap video, not of all the games, because that'd be crazy. You know, we've had a few things happen to the Vegas Golden Knights this year that are worth mentioning. Here you go. Vegas Golden Knights fans, we had an awesome season last year. An incredible season last year. An unbelievable season last year. Do you think maybe we might have a little bit of a playoff hangover to start the season? Well, there is one thing different from this year from last year. And that's that teams have film on us. See, last year, they didn't even know much of our players. They didn't know what kind of system we were going to use. But now they do. Now they've got film. Now they can better prepare. Or maybe other teams' medical staff finally found the cure for the dreaded Vegas flu. As I'm filming this video, the Vegas Golden Knights have played more road games than any other team in the NHL. You believe that? Our Vegas Golden Knights, they on the road. But not the second half of the season. Expect to see a lot more games at the Fortress. Beer prices at the Fortress. Second season, still ridiculously priced. I think it's like $16 for a freaking cold beer. That's crazy, right? Well, I went to Arizona and it was only 12 bucks. Thanks, Vegas. Thanks, Las Vegas Strip. Thanks, T-Mobile Arena. Check it out. The Vegas Golden Knights gave season ticket holders these free gold jackets. How cool is that? Honestly, it's an extra large, it's a little snug on the bug eye guy, but hey, it's a free jacket, that's all I'm saying. So the summer started out with all these rumors about Vegas Golden Knights acquiring Eric Carlson from the Ottawa Senators. Well, that fell through. Nate Schmidt was suspended for 20 games, talk about some BS, right? Of all the people, Schmitty suspended 20 games for a questionable drug test. To top it all off, Shea Theodore, restricted free agent, refusing to sign. What on earth is going up now? During the offseason this summer, before the season started, General Manager George McPhee did pull the trigger on two free agents, bringing in former Montreal captain Max Pacioretty and also picking up Paul Stasny from the Winnipeg Jets. Both players have made an impact when they've been on the ice for the Golden Knights this year. Now, unfortunately, at the trade deadline last year, we picked up Thomas Tatar. We paid a lot for him, then we shipped him to Montreal along with Nick Suzuki as part of the Patches deal, and Tatar's been lighting it up for Montreal. And I know some of you Gold Knights fans are freaking out, but it is what it is. You can't have every player on the team. I'm not going to lie. I was super excited for the home opener. Raise the championship banner, well, Western Conference championship banner. Play the stupid Philadelphia Flyers. I was all pumped up. And then we got our butts kicked. Then we went on the road, and we got our butts kicked some more. Then, some of Vegas Golden Knight Nation started to freak out. What's going on? How come we're not winning? Well, like I said earlier, film, people know our system, they know our players. It's going to take some time. But bug eye guy, a lot of Vegas Golden Knights fans are new to hockey, and they don't understand about waiting, and they don't understand about teams not playing good. What are we going to do? Do you guys remember last year? Do you remember the goalie situation last year where we played five goalies because of the dreaded, elusive injury bug? Do you remember? Well, our goalies have been healthy this year. But our forwards and a couple demon, not so much. Look, Vegas Golden Knights fans, I know we struggled at the beginning of the season. But we didn't have Tuck, we didn't have Eakin, we only had Stasny for three games. Patches has been on the IR twice. Colin Miller's been hurt. Folks. It happens, but the good teams, the tough physical teams, and the mentally strong teams persevere. They find a way to get through some Nate Schmidt suspensions or some Pacioretty injuries. Vegas Golden Knights fans, as you've already seen it in the standings, we're starting to make that climb on up to the top of the Pacific Division lead. One of the highlights of this season so far has been the outstanding goaltending from Mr. Marc-Andre Fleury. Six shutouts. He's gotten me, I don't know how many dozen free donuts from the Krispy Kremes. Hell, he almost put Krispy Kreme out of business when he had back-to-back -back shutouts. Now, unfortunately, every time Malcolm Subban plays, 
It seems like the Golden Knights don't want to help him out at all. We don't score any goals. Subban was 0-5 before he finally beat the stupid Los Angeles Kings. And honestly, what's the deal with them Los Angeles Kings anyways? I thought they were the worst team in the NHL. Well, the Vegas Gold Knights were 0-1-1 against them. But then we beat them twice in a row. Yeah, baby. <laughs> How about the Vegas Golden Knights fourth line? Are you kidding me? You got William Carrier, which by the way, we need a nickname for him. Leading the league in hits. You got pierre Edouard Belmar, pretty much quarterbacking the fourth line. Then you have, well, of course, I don't know, probably the most popular player for the Vegas Golden Knights right now, Mr. Ryan frickin' Reeves, who's actually been scoring this year on top of laying people out. And boy, oh boy, that Tom Wilson, a Washington Capitals Vegas Golden Knights matchup at the beginning of December, I've been waiting about that since the playoffs last year. And boy, oh boy, did it not disappoint. Now, Vegas Golden Knights fans, I know we've had some struggles back on the blue line, especially defensively. But I still don't understand why we're into season two and we're still playing Merrill over Brad Hunt. Honestly, we need to upgrade at that position, but I don't understand why they love John Merrill so much. He gets burned all the time. And honestly, when Merrill and Holden are paired together, I kind of freak out a little bit. So by now, I'm sure everyone's aware that this season we've called up Thomas Higa, Daniel Carr, uh, Reed Duke, and Brandon Peary. I know, I said Brandon Peary. Everybody's in love with Brandon Peary because every time he plays for the Vegas Golden Knights, it seems like he scores a goal. Look, folks, I like Brandon Peary just like the rest of you. But he's still waiver exempt. Now, do you want to keep Peary on the active roster and risk the chance of losing someone like Oscar Lindbergh, uh, Ryan Carpenter, or maybe even a Thomas Nosek? Is it worth the risk? I mean, Peary can't score every game, or can he? Look, folks, I know Brandon Peary's been playing really good for us, but here's the Bug Eye Guy's honest opinion. I think Brandon Peary gets sent back down to Chicago. Now, it won't be a long-term thing, but... If Colin Miller and Max Pacioretty both come back off the IR, not one but two players need to be sent down. Right off the bat, Brandon Peary does not have to clear waivers. Everyone's getting schooled on the whole waiver game in the 30 days or 10 NHL games. But from a team perspective, we can still call him back up later in the season. And right now we can protect the Oscar Lindberghs, Thomas Nosek, Ryan Carpenters of the world. And for you folks that think we should send Merrill or Hunt down, okay, quit confusing it. You need X amount of offensive players, X amount of defensive players, and X amount of goalies. You can't swap out a left wing for a defenseman. It doesn't work that way, folks. Now, the Bug Eye Guy is a lot like the rest of you Vegas Golden Knights fans. I love when Golden Pipe sings the national anthem at the Fortress. I freaking love it. I am a United States Navy veteran. I do not think it's disrespectful to yell the word knights during the anthem, especially when Golden Pipes pauses for us. I mean, some people want to compare us yelling knights to NFL players taking a knee. That is an argument that I'm not willing to start. Not interested. Honestly, my opinion of the first half of the season has been honestly pretty good. We struggled at the beginning. I knew we were going to have some defensive struggles. We had new players that had to jail, they had to get used to playing with each other. And now all of a sudden, the team's starting to get healthy. Now all of a sudden, they're starting to play night hockey. Now all of a sudden, the ticket prices are going up on flash sheets. And yes folks, flash seats, the app that they make us use still kind of sucks. But we don't really have a choice now, do we? So the trade deadline comes up in February. Um, there's already some rumors out there about some possible trades, which a trade might not be a bad thing. When you have a lot of assets and you want to put players up on waivers, there's a chance they can get claimed and you get nothing in return. So since we have this predicament of so many good players and not enough roster spots, maybe GMGM does pull the trigger and make a trade. I'd like to see another defenseman come in. That would be pretty good. But then again, we got Nick Haig, Zach Whitecloud. Eric Brandstrom, the brand wagon. We got a bunch of young guys in the AHL that could come up and play. 
But maybe they need a little bit more time in the AHL. If that's the case, let's go after a veteran. All right, Vegas Golden Knights, of course, like always, I've taken up way too much of your time. The first half of the season is over. In a playoff spot, sure, we're not at the top of the Pacific, but we struggled at the beginning. And who do we got to watch out for? Well, apparently it looks like we got to watch out for the Calgary Flames and the stupid San Jose Sharks. And, well, it was the Ducks, but, nah, the Ducks, they've kind of been struggling of late. Probably because Ryan Miller and John Gibson are both injured. Uh, speaking of goalies, how about Mr. Marc-Andre Fleury being voted to the Pro Bowl? Wait, Pro Bowl? What are you talking about, bug-eyed guy? I mean the All-Star game. All right, Vegas Golden Knights fans. The first half of the season had some ups and downs, but overall, I'm feeling really good about the team. I'm excited for the second half of the season, and you should be too. All right, so the Vegas Golden Knights take on the Anaheim Ducks tonight. In Anaheim, I'm sure a bunch of our Vegas Golden Knights fans will be down there because a lot of them traveled to L.A., the Bug Eye Guy traveled to Arizona. It's nice to see some Vegas Golden Knights in opposing stadiums. Pretty cool. All right, folks, I'm super excited for the second half of the season. I can't wait to see what GM GM George McPhee does or what the Vegas Golden Knights do on the ice. All I know is I'm super pumped up. It's 2019. I'm excited. I love you. And as always, duh, bug eye guy, go Knights go. All right, folks, welcome back. I do apologize. There was some wind noise in the video. A couple a couple little segments because I was filming outside and all of a sudden it's Vegas and the wind picked up. And, and I apologize for that. But I covered a lot, right? I mean, we kind of went from the very beginning with the suspensions and the not signings to the new players, to the Tatars, to the kind of went all over the place. But that's crazy, right? We're only 45 games in and all that stuff has happened to the Vegas Golden Knights. Yet we're tied for first right now. Two games at hand. I mean, we're, we're right up there in the standings. Our Vegas Golden Knights players, and I didn't mention in that video, but we didn't re-sign James Neal or David Perron or Lucas Spies. I mean, we lost those three players. And as a side note, Perron's been doing okay for St. Louis, but James Neal has been an utter disaster for Calgary. Calgary's number one in the Pacific. They're tearing it up. If you check the score, the box scores, check the box scores. You've never seen Neal's name on there, and you're going to go, boogie guy, he scored last week. Yeah, it was like the first goal in freaking forever. So does that mean general manager George McPhee is really smart? Or is James Neal kicking himself for leaving a place that was good to him? I don't know. Hey, this is a business, folks, and you're gone. And look now, we got Patches and Stasny, who in my opinion is an upgrade when they're healthy. Vegas Gold Knights are rolling just like they were last year. And that's with opposing teams having a cure for the Vegas flu. And that's with opposing teams scouting our team. We're still playing good. You know why? It's because we play a team game. The players go in there and they give 100% for each other. They've got a good, smart, respectful coaching staff. Treats the players with respect, helps them, gives them the tools that they need to succeed on the ice. That's it, folks. It's simple. All right, so before I dive into the recaps of the Kings, Ducks, and Devils game, I want to talk about two subjects. The first one is slightly political, and the Bug Eye Guy never likes to talk politics. He never likes to mix politics in with the Bug Eye Guy stuff. But... The government is shut down right now. 800,000 federal employees are furloughed because of a campaign promise for a wall that another country was supposed to pay for. All I'm saying is, I don't know why we're shutting down our government um, just because of a campaign promise that our government wasn't even supposed to pay for. I mean, illegal immigration is probably a big problem. I get it. I understand. But it's been a big problem then forever because we've never had a... Uh, fence or a wall or whatever you want to call it whatever they're calling it on tv now i don't know to me that doesn't make sense and i'm sure some of these uh canadian fans listening or some fans from uh, i know i got some fans over in sweden some of you guys that are listening to this podcast you're going i know bug that guy and for you folks listening in america whether you're a democrat or a republican or a tea party or a, whatever independent whatever they are i don't really care what you like i don't really care what you think i don't really care i mean honestly uh, we could throw religion in the mix, too. I mean, I'm not real religious, but I don't care that you're religious. I mean, that's fine. Do whatever whatever you believe in and whatever you got to do to get up every day and get through that day and then go to bed and make it to another day. Hey, I'm all about that. But this situation here just seems kind of silly. 
I mean, we got all these people that we elected. We vote for these people that represent us. And then they go up there and don't do nothing and just keep the government closed. And I'm telling you, but the, you're going to start to see this pinch really bad when these federal employees start to uh, miss their paychecks. When people start not getting paid, that's when shit's really going to hit the fan. So I don't understand that. That's my own. That's probably all the politics I'll ever talk about on the podcast. But it's just silly, right? I mean, crazy. One other non-hockey related topic. Two teams. NFL. Love you guys football fan. I know a lot of you guys football fans too. And when I say football, I'm talking about football, American football, not that crap you guys call soccer. And I know soccer or football is real popular all around the world. But here in America, our football is pigskin. My Dallas Cowboys beat the Seattle Seahawks. They finally won a playoff game. It's like the second playoff game in Jason Garrett's career. It's crazy, right? We won. We almost screwed it away at the end, but bottom line is the Dallas Cowboys won. And when the Dallas Cowboys are winning, that is good for the NFL. Dallas Cowboys got a lot of fans. Don't get me wrong. I know there's just as many Cowboys haters. There's more Cowboys haters probably. But I'm happy because my Dallas Cowboys are moving on. Now, the Philadelphia Eagles, a uh, NFC East division rival, got luckier than shit yesterday. Their former kicker, Parky, Cody, Parquet, Parky, whatever his name is, Signed with the Chicago Bears, and he missed 11 field goals this year. So the Eagles, towards the end of the game, they drive down the field, and they score. And now the Bears are like, oh, man, we're in Chicago. We're in Soldier Field. All our fans. No. Their rookie or second-year quarterback, Trubinsky, takes that team. First of all, they get an awesome kick return. Then he takes that team, drives them right down the field, gets them in field goal range. There's like four seconds left in the game. All they got to do is have their kicker come out, chip shot, win the game, right? <laughs> nope. Doink. Timeout called. Doink. He's a double doinker. Doink, doink. The freaking Philadelphia Eagles won that game. The fans, the fans went nuts. I mean, this one, this one viral video was so funny. He came out and he's going off and he's, ah, F this and F that, beep, beep, beep. But he's like, dude, this kicker gets paid all this money. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer in, hey, dude, you're a kicker, bro. You get paid to kick the ball. You don't really get hit. You, the, your chances of getting that CTE or that concussion stuff is, I mean, kickers do throw tackles. Every, but for the most part, they're not real contact. They're not the biggest dudes. Your job is to kick the fucking football. That's it. When you miss 11 times and now 12 times, you should not have a job. And I know kickers, once it gets in their head, it gets in their head. Once it's in your head, you're done. Find another career. Hopefully you went to school and finished school. Because if you can't do the one job, of kick the ball through the uprights, can't get that right, then why are you on the team? They'll find somebody else that can kick the ball through the uprights. I don't know. Honestly, the NFC East, and football in general, it's been kind of tough this year. Dallas started out terrible, and uh, uh, they made a trade, and then they did really good. So, hey, the NHL, all you got to do is maybe do a trade, and you can do really good, right? Yep. <laughs> Probably not. All right, that's my two topics. That's my football and my politics. We're done with that. Now it's time to dive into what really happened this week for the Vegas Golden Knights. There had to be some news, right? Something had to go on. Let's find out right now. Let's start off with uh, the Los Angeles Kings coming to the Fortress on New Year's Day. And uh, Marc-Andre Fleury played that game, and he did okay. I mean, he wasn't the greatest goalie. I mean, he only let in zero goals and got my fat ass some free donuts from the Krispy Kremes. As he got a shutout, and I was super excited. Now, the Los Angeles Kings, their goalie Campbell just came back off the IR. This was his first game getting thrown back in there because Jonathan Quick played the night before. Campbell comes in against the uh, semi-hot Vegas Golden Knights team, I would imagine, and Campbell was outstanding. He had so many saves. The Vegas Golden Knights, again, and this has happened to them so many times this year, it seems like they always play, and they get like the the craziest best game from the opposing team's goalie. I mean, how many times have we had 40 plus shots on guys and against the Kings. And a lot of these shots that Vegas took on Campbell were grade a high caliber, highly contested shots. I mean, they, they were good shots. Campbell was just lights out. Good news is his flower was sitting back there trying to stay awake from, a, I think he only faced like 17 shots. I could get the stats, but who really cares? Like 17 shots in the game. He's back there trying to stay awake, trying to hopefully they pass me the puck or something. Bottom line is, Vegas, for the fourth time in a month, the Vegas Golden Knights played the Los Angeles Kings. They ended up being 2-1-1. One, and one. So, five out of eight points, I'll take it. Unfortunately, they're still the worst team in the NHL, and we should have beat them, but you know what? I don't care. We got the win. I got some delicious uh, diabetic delights from Krispy Kreme, and I'm happy. Vegas Golden Knights Nation, 
probably went nuts after this Kings game because, of course, game-winning goal, Brandon Peary. Here is some post-game audio, some post-game interviews from uh, Coach Gerard Gallant, uh, Cody Eakin, and then followed by Brandon Peary. And this is post-Los uh, Angeles Kings New Year's Day at the Fortress. Take a listen. We're just playing strong defense hockey, defensive hockey. And uh, like I said, tonight we played an outstanding game. Uh, we cut a team in the back-to-back, and uh, we didn't let off. We, we forechecked really hard. We played really hard, and uh, we took a lot of their time and space away. So I love the way we played tonight. No, I don't plan that until late in the hockey game. I mean, we scored, made it one nothing, and they had a great chance right after that in the breakaway. So, But, uh, you know, usually get down to six or seven minutes, and I want certain guys on the ice, and the guys know that, the routine. So we shorten it a little bit, and the guys go out there and do their jobs. Well, like I said, uh, you bring up a guy like Perry, and he's scoring. It seems like he's scoring every game for us and playing real well, and uh, that's what it takes to win. We always talk about 23 players in your roster, but really, if you go through a great season and have a good, real good year, you probably use about 30 players. And, uh, you know, so far it's been real good for us, and the guys we call up play real well. Definitely, he was great tonight. Uh, definitely been stronger defensively. Uh, he's physically stronger, and uh, he's he's skating a lot better. So uh, he's, he's definitely improved his game a lot, and he's a good hockey player. And uh, hopefully, he can continue to put the puck in the back of the net for us because that's what he does real well. But uh, he since he's been here, he's played great two two way hockey, and that's uh, that's real key for us. Yeah, real happy. I mean, we've had a tough first 20 games of the season, obviously, and uh, we battled back for that. And we're just playing real good hockey. The last since the Christmas break, we played great hockey. We like we get a lot more energy in our step, and uh, the guys are playing well and working hard. So I love the way we played the last four games for sure. Um, I don't know. It's different. I think we're just playing the right way. I think um, you know we're making the game easier on ourselves and allowing ourselves to skate and, and use our speed, uh, not turning things over in the, at either blue line and uh, making it more difficult on us on each other than it has to be. So um, you know, from the from the goalies right up to the forwards, and uh, it's been pretty solid. Yep. Uh, it's it's awesome. Um, the guy can sure put the puck in the net. He finds himself. He puts himself in the good areas, um, and um, you know he's getting rewarded. So um, you know it's it's part of hockey. Guys are guys are stepping up left and right. Whether it's uh, guys just transitioning from lines or guys getting called up like he is, and um, you got to have that to be successful. I know when last year we went through you know five goalies and a few weeks there, um, you know, it could have been. Could have been a pretty ugly time for us, but guys just elevated their game, and uh, that's what you need, and that's what uh, Brandon's doing now. I'm just trusting myself, you know, just having confidence in my game, um, and that's probably it. You know, just skating and having fun. You gotta have fun. Yeah, I was feeling good tonight. Uh, I've been feeling good for the last little while, and um, you know, that's what you want to do. You want to be having fun, playing the game you love, and. Um, when you really enjoy it, I think it uh, transitions to uh, you know, solid performances. It's pretty good. It's a good feeling, and the team's winning, and I'm, that's the good feeling about it. And you know, the fact that I'm contributing here and there—that's, it, you know, it, I've always believed in myself, and you know, I'm getting the opportunity, so I'm glad I'm making the most of it. Yeah, I, you know, I think early in my career, I, you know, maybe took that stuff for granted, and you know, I'm a little older, a little more mature, and you know, I realize. You know, you you do those tough area things and you get rewarded on the other end of the ice. So, you know, I've been fortunate. The coaches in uh, Chicago, you put me in defensive situations too, so I've gotten to work on that. And, you know, there, there's a little more confidence down there. He was good. Yeah, and, you know, give him credit, but we stuck with it. We had 40 shots, and, you know, if that's what it's going to take, that's what it's going to take. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. Let's move on to the next game. The next game was Friday night. This was a Friday night Pacific Division matchup where our Vegas Golden Knights had to take a ridiculously long flight, like 40-minute flight down to probably John Wayne and head on over to Anaheim to take on Anaheim Ducks at the Honda Center. Now, Vegas Golden Knights fans have been traveling, especially these West Coast teams, really, really good. In fact, here's the audio from the National Anthem during the Anaheim Ducks game where you can clearly hear... Vegas Golden Knights Nation, scream out nights. Take a listen. Now, how cool is that, Vegas Golden Knights Nation, man? I was in Arizona twice this year. I screamed nights at the top of my lungs twice this year. And shout out to all the Vegas Golden Knights fans that made the trip down to Anaheim and supported our Vegas Golden Knights. And we beat them. 
Now, Bug Eye Guy actually left his house to go watch this game. This was the first game on TV in a while that Bug Eye Guys had to watch because I went to a couple games. But so I go to PTs. PTs over here. PTs is like a neighborhood bar. They're all over town if you're not from Vegas. I go to PTs close to my house with some friends, and we start watching the game. And you know, we get the early lead. I'm all excited, and then bam, bam, the Ducks score two goals like back to back. I'm like, huh, what just happened? And the Vegas Golden Knights are used to that. We we tend to get goals in bunches sometimes. So when it happens to us, I'm like, oh, that really sucks. That really hurts. But what do the Vegas Golden Knights do? Well, the Vegas Golden Knights do what we've known to expect from them, and they come back and get two quick goals on their own. Bam, bam. Now the Vegas Golden Knights are up three to two. We end up winning the game three to two. It got a little hot and heavy at the end of the second. I mean, the Ducks, I feel bad for the Ducks because the Ducks started out the season <laughs> terrible. Then the Ducks went on a 10-game uh, span where they won 9 out of 10 games. So now every, all the pundits, you know, ooh, the Anaheim Ducks, me, me. And then, <laughs> uh, going into that game against Vegas, they were 0-6. Uh, they left that game 0-7, and, and then yesterday they lost to Edmonton, 0-8. They haven't won in eight games. Now, they did get a couple overtime losses in there, so they did get a couple points, but they have not won a game in eight games. Pundits, I'm going to get to you at the end. The, the what the puck rant is, is all about you pundits, but. I feel for the Ducks. I do. But honestly, Vegas is 3-0 against Anaheim this year, and that's six points, and I like that. Another cool thing about this Ducks game is it was like the first time that Vegas Golden Knights faithful fans got to see the potential of the Max Pacioretty, Paul Stasny, Alex Tuck line. There was a beautiful pass by Stasny right over to Patches for an empty net goal. Those are the goals that like Ovechkin scores on us all the time. We've never really had players that are able to do those kind of passes and those setups. And this could be special. Now, I say could because these these three guys got to stay freaking healthy, man. If they can stay healthy and get some consistent ice time, they're going to be scary. They're going to be, like, real scary. Here's some audio from post-game interviews from Nate Schmidt, Coach Gerard Gallant, Thomas Nosick, and Max Pacioretty. That's the order the voices will come up. Here's just some quick thoughts they gave to the, uh, the reporters following the uh, 3-2 victory in Anaheim against the Ducks. Take a listen. We uh, sure tested ourselves a few times early in the second period. I, yeah, it's not that. I mean, we knew they were going to come out and play a hard game. I didn't like the way we started, but I liked the way we responded. And, you know, the third period we traded some chance with them. I think that uh, we need to be a lot better on our power play. That's that's not good enough. Um, but, again, you found a way to win, and, and you're never going to apologize for that. And, and the goaltender makes a couple of great saves at the end of the game, as per, you, as per Mark, as per all-star Mark. You know, and uh, we're... Just happy that um, you know that we were able to you know get ourselves a lead. I mean, because I thought that they controlled a little bit of the play, you know, throughout the second half of the game. Is but hey, we won a game on the road against a good team. I mean, Flowers has been our backbone of our team for the last year and a half. I mean, he's something else. He gives our guys so many so much confidence when he goes out there and plays and knows that we can go out there and make plays, knowing that he has that uh, th that type of skill in his background. I just, you know, both co players played really well. I mean, Gibson played really well again tonight, too. It kept them in the game, and that's another reason why they're where they're at. And he's an excellent goaltender, but Flower, and he's <laughs> to see him every day. It's, it's a real treat to be able to watch him and play with him every day. We had a couple lapses tonight, obviously, but uh, I thought we played outstanding hockey for most of the game, and uh, a lot of shots on net tonight, and Gibson and uh, Fleury were both real good in the net, so happy with the two points. Yeah, definitely high-end players that can make plays, and uh, it was a real nice play by Stashney and, uh, you know, Patch at the open had to put it in, so it's played real well. It was a good it was a good night for our, our, our top guys, for sure. There's a lot to talk about Gibson for the Vezina, but, uh, boy, oh, boy, your guy's pretty sharp, too. Well, the two of them look pretty good. So uh, they're both great goaltenders, and uh, like I said, I think Gibson's a great goalie, and uh, obviously our guy's been outstanding all year. So good battle tonight for the goalies. Like I said, I thought we were in control of the game most of the night. We were we were definitely dominating the shot clock and territorial play, and I I liked our game, and we were playing real quick. And so when you're behind two one, you can't lose your game and can't lose your focus. Pretty good game for you and a good game for the team. Yeah, sure. I think the most important thing is to win for us, and uh, I think it's a five five in a row, so we have to keep going like that and play our game. That's what they do the best, and me personally, I just try to go hard to the net and create some chaos there and uh, put some put in some rebounds. That's what, what happened tonight. Those guys that you play with, Eakin and Carpenter, they look after things defensively, but Eakin is a creative player as well. Yeah, they're higher on the puck, they're strong on the puck, so we try to carry some offense as well, so uh, I think we, we, we get uh, some chemistry going the last couple of games, so it's, it's always good.
Uh, as a whole, we really played well, especially in their end. We made uh, life hard on their D, made them skate. You could see times where you know, they were just uh, doing whatever they could to get the puck out of their end, and ultimately I think that wore them down and helped us win the game. He's the best at that. He's uh, made that you know, an easy layup for me. Um, it started with a great play from Tucky. And, uh, you know, it's a good line, too. I think everyone pitches in in their, their own uh, area. I thought we played a very strong game tonight as a line and as a team, and we want to build off that. Definitely. It's uh, been a, season, a start to the season that no one drew up with, uh, you know, injuries and, and playing through them and then finally having to come out and for both of us and um, to be able to come in now and feel pretty good and, you know, kind of start from scratch and put together a good win as a, a line and as a team felt really good. All right, folks, the final game since the last podcast had the New Jersey Devils coming to town. Now, this is a rematch from the December 14th game at which we chased Corey Snyder. We had the early lead, then we played soft, let them come back, score late, and then they beat us in overtime. It was, uh, that game sucked. That was two points that we should have had. We ended up giving a point away in that game. But now the Devils were coming back to the fortress. Now, news started to leak relatively early, and it was an afternoon game. It was a 1 o'clock Pacific Standard Time game that Malcolm Subban would get the start in net. Bug Eye guy was like, you know what? Good for Subban. One, it's good to give Flower time off. That's what all the pundits have been saying, that Flower's on pace to play a record numbers of games. But no, they got Subban in there. And the cool thing about Subban playing was Subban hasn't played in the Fortress in Vegas since March of this of 2018. It's been a long time. In fact, I was chanting Subban with a lot of the fans during the first period. And it had been so long since Subban had played in Vegas that – it took him a while to find the little soup thing that scrolls across the scrolls across the banner, like just underneath the suite level. But by the second period, the bug eye wife was clicked to tell me, hey, they got it back up there. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. But Subban comes, New Jersey Devils, playing in front of his home fans, gives up two goals early. Right off the bat, we're like, oh, crap, here we go again. Here we go again. Vegas is not going to contribute. They're not going to score goals when Subban's out there, and then Subban's going to get a garbage loss. Well, one of the goals he gave up, and he probably should have had it. The other one was, no, bad defense. And that was my big problem with this game. I mean, this game, we had a couple of defensive players that really, really did not play good. I mean, one of them was just standing out there. I'm like, I mean, what is he doing? He's not even moving. It was, it was, it was not a very good defensive game uh, for a few individuals in this Devils game. Another player, Jonathan Marchessault, which, by the way, if you have not voted for Jonathan Marchessault for the All-Star game, you need to vote. You need to go to NHL.com and select the All-Star thing and Pacific Division. We vote for Marchie. We want Marchie in the All-Star game for two reasons. One, he kind of got screwed last year. He probably should have gone last year instead of James Neal. And two, we don't want Flower to go by himself. So if we can get that extra spot, and honestly, there's some players on there. No, it should be Marchie. So vote for Marchie. So. Now, having said that, Marchie struggled over the last few games. I mean, I guess this devil game, he had a wide open net and just missed it. He's had a couple issues where he's just a little bit off. And then when he gets flustered, you know, Marchie, Marchie likes to get in there and get all tough and physical and, and kind of stir things up. In fact, there was an interview, a post-game interview, where someone talked about this very subject with Ryan Reeves. Take a listen to what Ryan Reeves had to say about Jonathan Marchessault being a tough guy. It's about trying to get Marchie to the two games in a row now, Max. Get Marchie to the All-Star game. The average height was too high. Let's bring it down a bit. There's people in the front row that can't see these tall guys. They can see him easily. So get Marchie to the All-Star game. I wanted to ask you about Marchie's willingness to, to mix it up all the time. You've seen there. He's always in the middle of every big fight. What do you make of the little guy getting in there this round? He's always in the middle of every big fight. That's never heard that one before. Um, <laughs> I mean, yeah, he's he's feisty. I think um, you know, I noticed it last year, especially in the playoffs. Uh, he's not afraid to mix it up and throw the body around, and um, it's not a big body, but he throws it around as much as he can, and I think that's what makes him so effective. Uh, frustrated. I, yeah, I don't exactly know what I was thinking. I I just blacked out for two seconds, and um, I don't really know. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but that was uh, that was interesting. I'm guessing I'm not going to be on the 6 on 5 again, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> what does it say about this team down 2 nothing? You guys haven't been in that deficit where you lost uh, lately yeah, to, to come back. Yeah, really good. You know, I think um, you know we all these guys once they came they came back on us when we were in New Jersey and um, you, know, they, you know they beat us in the third period and, and in overtime. So um, you know to come out after uh, you know maybe a little bit of a sloppy first, I think is uh, you know good character. That's pretty funny, right? That's what I thought. So this Devils game in particular, the first goal for Vegas was from none other than Mr. Ryan Reeves. He stole the puck, came in, shot it. Five hole, their goalie really should have had it. It trickled through. He got the goal. Vegas is down two to one. 
the place goes nuts because everybody loves fucking Ryan Reed. My wife included, the bug eye guy likes him too. So that was awesome. Then we tied up. Now, the initial call on the ice was no goal, and I believe it was for goaltender interference. It happened on the opposite side from where I was sitting. But I was like, no, dude, Brady McNabb shot a money-ass shot from the point. It went in. Initially, I thought maybe Carpenter, who was in front of uh, Kincaid for the Devils, maybe he hit it with a high stick. But I was like, I don't think he made contact. Come to find out, it was questioned that Kincaid was interfered by Carpenter in front of the net, when, in fact, video evidence showed that Carpenter... Uh, was outside the crease at all times. And in fact, Kincaid left the crease and made contact. So ended up being a good goal. Here is the audio that I, and, and it's crazy. The bug eye guy was getting ready to record. And I just happened to hit record right when the ref came out and announced it and the crowd went nuts. Take a quick listen to what happened. So that was cool that we tied it up. So that's two to two. I'm feeling good. And then we end up getting a goal from Patches. Now, Patches has been back for two games. Brandon Peary has now been gone for two games. Patches has scored a goal in every game. Brandon Peary wasn't there. Prior to that, Peary scored a goal like every freaking game. That's crazy, right? It's like that one roster spot tends to contribute on the goal sheet. Now, the end of this game, like three and some change left. Ryan Reeves got called for tripping. Now, to me, it was more of a... Now, he did get his stick close to the Devils' feet, I guess, but there was like a few seconds before the Devils' player slid and fell, and then it was like a delayed call. They ended up calling Reeves for tripping. I guess it's tripping. You know, you call it tripping. I call it a freaking toe pick, but okay, that's fine. So he gets called. And the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, they're only up by one. They didn't get an insurance goal. They've got to kill off this penalty, and then they end up pulling Kincaid, so it's a six on four, and Vegas does an awesome job. They kill off the penalty. Reeves comes out. Now he's the fifth guy. It's six on five. There's not much time left. Reeves gets the puck. He tries to shoot it down to the other end. He tries to shoot for an empty net goal. Here's the problem. Folks, you guys know Ryan Reeves. Ryan Reeves is a fan favorite, right? Ryan Reeves is a big, strong, tough guy, right? It's not Ryan Reeves' fault that he put all that strength and might into his stick to shoot the puck at the empty net. And he's so strong and so badass that the stick snapped a little bit. And it forced the puck to elevate just a little bit. I mean, he was probably aiming, as Coach Gallant said, for, you know, top right corner, but he was so strong and his stick broke that the puck just caught a little bit of air. And it sailed off into the yonder, past the goal, up into the net, behind the goal. Hell, it probably would have gotten up to the upper levels if it wasn't for the net. Delay a game. Reeves couldn't believe it. He's thinking, I'm going to score an empty net goal, and then I get a penalty for delay a game, and I launch the puck, you know, uh, Half the freaking ice. Further than half the ice. I kind of felt bad for Reeves. Luckily, Vegas was able to kill it off, and they won the game 3-2 to two because had that penalty cost us, maybe they tied it up or an overtime, that would have sucked. Um, but luckily, we can all have a little bit of fun talking about it. And, hey, in fact, Coach Gallant had a little fun talking about it in the post-game presser. Take a listen. Yeah, it was great. He was outstanding today. Played a real good, solid game for us, and uh, it was good. He, ha he hadn't played in this building in quite a while, so it was good to see him play today, and uh, he stood tall for sure. Yeah, I thought they did an outstanding job, especially, you know, the, the, well, it was, it was two back-to-back, -back, and with the goal he pulled at the end of it, too. So I think they did an outstanding job. Subi made some real key saves. You know, they weren't, you know, there was traffic in front of the net, and there was a couple of rebounds there, so he stood tall and stood strong on there, but uh, it was an excellent job to win a hockey game. Yeah, not really. He's getting reevaluated. Uh, like you said, he came back and played one ship in the third, and then that was the last I heard. So I'll find out tomorrow probably. Well, I thought the first period uh, they came out and played a perfect road game. They played real quick. They played real fast. Everything I talk about being first on pucks, being competitive, they definitely did that. And uh, I was the only thing I was happy with in the first period is uh, Ryan Reeves' goal, and they had a, another chance that was disallowed. But I thought that line played real well and. I thought after that we got our game back and played real hard, especially in the second, and uh, you know, found our game. I guess I can look back to my days, and it was the funnest game I ever played after having a child. So uh, Max came out there, and he looked happy today, and he was playing. He played hard, and he played fun. So I think he was tired, but I think he went out there and played a great game because he was so pumped up about the baby. Coach uh, Joe Panless, Vegas advisor. Post game, Ryan Reeves said that might be the last time you put him on the ice with an empty net. Definitely not. <laughs> I didn't put him on. He was in the penalty box. <laughs> we love Reaver. He got the game going for us. You know, he scored that big goal to get the game going when we were pretty flat. So, uh, you know, sometimes you make mistakes and that happens. And he just missed the top corner. So he's tried his best. <laughs>
can you offer your assessment of uh, Stasny, Tuck, uh, Patches, Lyon, how they're, how they're rounding into shape? Yeah, they're come, they haven't played a whole lot of hockey together with injuries, you know, and so they're, they're doing the best. They're playing pretty good hockey, and they're playing well, and uh, I like the chemistry right now. And like I said, the only thing, if we keep getting some minor injuries and you, you keep, uh, you know, fi fixing matching lines and matching your uh, the players you have to put in the lineup. So, like I said, as a coach, and I told you this last year, I like to keep rolling the lines over, but uh, sometimes you got to make changes, and it's part of the game. Try and win games every night. Now, here's what uh, Ryan Reeves had to say about the whole uh, delay a game, uh, strength, uh, puck over glass situation. Here's what Remo had to say. Off my stick, I was like, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I just saw it sailing like this. And you know, sometimes it, you can see it coming down like that. You know, it, like, literally was picking up wind. Yeah. No, I feel like the crowd was cheering so much that there was, like, hot air coming up. and was, like, pushing the puck in. I think that's what happened. You know what I mean? I think the rest of us, you missed it. We're like, oh, like oh, no. second, oh I knew. I'm like, oh, the, way the second it came up, I don't even know why I shot it. I didn't even want to shoot it. And then... <laughs> I'm not really sure what happened. It just it looked like a frisbee almost. Yeah, like legit. It, I don't think that was a regulation puck, to be honest. Though, so. I'll get it checked. Yeah, please do. Now, that Devils game was fun. It was exciting. It was a little bit stressful, but I kind of like those afternoon games, especially since all the kiddos are going back to school today. Here's the locker room interview from Malcolm Subban, Max Pacioretty, and Alex Tuck following the 3-2 victory against the New Jersey Devils at the Fortress. I felt great, obviously, you know, anytime you can win at home, uh, you know, we played, uh, you know, we're definitely the better team for the most, most of the game, so I, I think we deserve this one. Two early goals, but as the game went on, we could see you you're building in confidence. Can you just talk about the way your confidence grew throughout the game? Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, a uh, tough start there with a couple goals, but, you know, boys rallied back and, uh, you know, persevered, and, uh, you know, I didn't get too much the rest of the game, so a lot of stuff on the outside, so uh, it helps a lot, obviously. Um, three, three, uh, three goals. So I uh, can't complain <laughs> as a goaltender. When were you uh, alerted that you were going to get the start yesterday or today? Um, I think it was sometime yesterday. Maybe, maybe no, actually, maybe it was a little bit before that. I don't remember. So when you when um, you did hear though that you were going to get your first home start since March 30th of last year, just kind of what went through your head, the build up, and the anticipation. And Oh yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, I was excited and uh, you know, excited to get back uh, in front of the fans. But uh, you know, we, we played a great game today, so uh, you know, I, thought, I thought we deserved it. Yeah. Is there any difference between playing on the road, playing at home, any sort of extra jump that the home fans give you, anything like that? Oh uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, anytime you can ever. I mean, to be honest, we had some pretty good uh, road crowds. So, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, anytime you can get in front of your home fans, it's, it's unbelievable. It's the best building in the in the league to play. So, uh, you know, it's uh, it's uh, a lot of fun for sure. So it's obvious that we've had a lot of confidence right now, given the way things have gone. We don't want to get too comfortable because, uh, you know, as the, the year goes on, it's going to be more and more challenging. But you know what? Uh, for Subs to go in there and play the way he did, um, and you know, get those shots at the end of the game that he faced, it's really nice to see him get rewarded. He's been great all year, and uh, we haven't put up, uh, you know, great games in front of him. But now for him to get, I think, uh, three in, or two in a row. Uh, Three in a row or two in a row? Two, two in a row. Two in a row for him. Yeah, uh, it's been it's been uh, you know nice to see him get rewarded because like I said, he's a guy, just a team guy that comes to the rink every day with a smile on his face and works hard. So uh, you know, give him a lot of credit for that. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a lucky bounce off my pan, but um, I thought that our line generated a lot tonight. I think we were leaned on defensively as well, and that's the type of line we want to be. Um, it's really easy to come back from an injury and play with those two. I've always had success with. Uh, with Staz, and you know, this year me and Tucky have built some chemistry. I think everyone's built chemistry with Tucky this year, the way he's playing, and um, you know, it made it a lot easier for me to come back in that uh, situation. And um, definitely not satisfied. I want to get better from there. I don't know, just talking to them, they've, they've really helped me out, helped my game out a lot. Uh, you see articles that talk to Staz um, while I was injured and stuff like that, and he um, taught me a lot more about watching the game from up top, which really helped my game. And then playing with Pacioretty, I see, see that goal scorer's mentality and where he always finds that little soft spot and stuff like that. So it's been good. Uh, I thought he was lights out. I think uh, at the start, I think we kind of let New Jersey up the hook and gave him a couple of great A's and they were able to capitalize and uh, it happened sometimes. But you know what? His ability to respond and have a couple of really big saves down the stretch were they were huge, especially when we had uh, the all kind of at the end. And, I mean, even throughout the entire game, they had some great A's and he was able to stop and he played really, really well. All right, folks. So following 
the Devils game Monday morning, which was this morning. Um, the Vegas Golden Knights made a couple roster moves. They uh, placed William Carrier on injured reserve, which I love Carrier, and I hope this doesn't affect his league leads and hits, but they're reporting that he has the flu or he's sick. So, hey, you know what? If they can save a couple days, put him on the IR, guess who they called up? Yep. You guys, I mean, he wasn't even gone for, what, what four days, five days? Yep. Fan base is going to freak out again because old Brandon Peary has been recalled yet again from the Chicago Wolves of the AHL. And he's practicing today, and he's expected to be on the ice tomorrow when the Vegas Golden Knights take on the New York Rangers at the Fortress. So Peary's back. Now, a lot of you guys have seen some posts and seen some videos. You may understand, you may not understand what exactly the Vegas Golden Knights are doing reference Brandon Peary. Some people are questioning, why don't we sign him to a contract? That's inaccurate because he's under contract. It's a two-way contract where he can go up and down. There's a lot of logistics behind the scenes about this. Here is General, Assistant General Manager Kelly McCrimmon with uh, kind of a good explanation. He's talking to Gary Lawless, and this is a good explanation of uh, what exactly is going on with the Brandon Perry situation. I mean, it, this is a business, but you also have to finagle your roster a little bit. You have to do a little peeking and a little bit of tweaking to make it work. So here's the audio portion of the interview uh, with Gary Lawless from uh, Assistant Vegas Golden Knights General Manager Kelly McCrimmon talking specifically about the Brandon Perry situation. Well, uh, the first step is Max Pacioretty uh, coming off of IR. He'll be available uh, to play with us tonight. And then, uh, you know, from there, uh, you know, we're thrilled with uh, Brandon's play. He's um, improved. He's uh, made a great impression. And, uh, and he'll be back uh, with our team. So I think it's important that our fans uh, understand that. And, uh, you know, really what it does is it buys us some time, Brandon, uh, is able to be uh, returned to Chicago without going through waivers because he's played less uh, than 10 games uh, in the National Hockey League. And uh, this will give us some time to, uh, uh, to make a decision. It's, it's not unlike uh, a year ago when we uh, sent Shea Theodore and Alex Tuck down to Chicago because uh, uh, it, it allows us to protect our roster, I guess, to the best of our ability. And then when we had an opportunity to get... Uh, Alex and Shea back up. We did that, and of course, they've been with us uh, ever since. This will be similar with uh, Brandon when we get an opportunity to uh, to have him back on our team. We will. Well, for some of you Vegas Golden Knights fans, I hope this uh, cleared it up. For most of you that already knew about this, sorry, just had to add it in there. It was important, and uh, people need to know. People need facts. I know it's 2019, but facts do matter. You know, I don't really like doing these uh, boring stats and reading numbers to you guys because it always reminds me of that old episode of Saved by the Bell. And yes, I'm almost 40. So I'm a Saved by the Bell kind of kid. I grew up in that kind of era. And I always forget there was an episode with A.C. Slater. And he was, uh, they had a, a radio channel. And they had a, a segment for sports. And A.C. Slater, you know, he stunk it up. He was terrible. And they ended up writing the script for him. And it was like, uh, Valley 5, Bayside 4. Uh, this school 3, this school 2. And it was very, like, nonchalant and boring. And I always feel like when I'm reading these numbers, I'm like, oh, Calgary, 43 games played, 26, 13, and 4. They got 56 points. In Vegas, they play 45 games, and they're 26-15-4 with 56 points. Well, that's kind of boring. You don't really care. And I get it. You're driving to work or sitting at home or whatever you're doing, just listening to this podcast. You're like, bug-eye guy, I don't care about these stupid numbers. But we still got to kind of cover them, so we'll cover them bug-eye guy style, right? Calgary, 56 points. Vegas, 56 points. San Jose, 53 points. The wild card right now for the Western Conference has Dallas and Anaheim. Dallas at 48 points. Anaheim at 45 points. So we are 11 points above the cutoff right now for a playoff spot. That's the only number you need to know. Moving on, let's talk about some stats. Goals. We're averaging three goals a game, which puts us 14th in the league. Shots on goal, 33.1 a game, seventh in the league. Face-off percentage, 49.4. It's getting better because Stasny's been healthy, but we're 19th in the league. Goals allowed. Goals allowed, 2.62 a game. That's tied for third in the league. Shots on goal allowed, 28.6. Again, third in the league. These are stats that are really cool, right? Yep. <laughs> no, bug eye guy knows. You guys know these are kind of boring, right? Let's get to the good important ones. All right, player stats. we got Alex Tuck leading the team with 33 points. Wild Bill, 30 points. Marchie, 30 points. Riley Smith, 27 points. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go down here to Ryan Reeves. He's played 44 games. He's got eight goals, six of six, um, 14 points, averaging 11.35 time on ice. Those are career highs for Mr. Ryan Reeves. Who else we got? William Carey, 44 games, eight goals, one assist, nine points, 9.55 average ice time. Paul Stasny's only played 15 games, but he's got five goals, five assists, 10 points. That's going to go up. Brandon Perry, seven games, six goals, three assists, nine points, 13.54 ice time. Interesting, right? Yeah, not really. I know. I get it. These are kind of boring stats. Here's a cool stat. Here's the stat that I've been talking about the last couple podcasts. This stat means a lot to the VGK bug eye guy. This stat means a lot to the Vegas Golden Knights, and this stat means a lot to the Vegas Golden Knights' fourth line in particular. 
Now, because William Carrier didn't play yesterday against the Devils, him and Revo, as of right now, have played the same amount of games. Just remember, William Carey is currently on the IR. So if Reeve plays tomorrow, it's going to move. But as of right now, they've both played the same amount of games. William Carey, 219 freaking hits. Second place in the NHL, Ryan Reeves, 164 hits. They are still leading the league in hits. I love it. Third place is still Milan Lucic from Edmonton at 151. He's played two games less than Carey and Reeves. And then Cedric Paquette from Tampa Bay has played 41 games, and they got 143. So the good thing is, William Carrier, hopefully he doesn't miss a lot of time. But if he does miss a game or two or a few, at least he's got a good lead. And you know, as soon as he comes back healthy, he's going to be hitting people left and right. All right, folks, that's enough of the boring stats. And uh, this week, I'm not going to do a comment of the week because uh, I just, with the whole recap, is with the addition of so much external audio into this episode of the VGK Bug Eye Guy podcast, I figured I had to cut some cut some fat somewhere. So the comment of the week is going to go out and uh, it'll be back. Don't worry. All right, folks, we've reached the end of the VGK Bug Eye Guy podcast, episode 25. And you guys know that I can't end it without a rant. Now, my wife, as I was uh, asking spitballing for ideas for the podcast name, she said, you should change the rant to what the puck. And I was like, you know what? There's some what the pucks out there. That's why I didn't use that as a podcast name, but uh, I'm going to change it. So instead of the rant, it's going to be called the what the puck section. And, um, you guys, you guys that follow the bug eye guy, I uh, I kind of go all over the place in the rant slash what the puck section. Sometimes it's hockey related, but for most of the times, it's like real world stuff going on that just causes the bug eye guy to go, really, what the puck? This week, I'm playing it safe, okay? Be- because of uh, some some external things going on, I- I'm gonna play it safe this week. So this week, my rant, my what the puck segment, formerly known as the rant, is on uninformed fans. Crappy cheers at the fortress and the stupid pundits. Now, the fans, I'm going to be very light on because I know we still have a lot of new NHL fans, but we're a season and a half in. You should know the basics by now. You should know that the Vegas Golden Knights use this thing called Twitter and they release all the practice information. So that's where you get it. You guys should by now know where you can watch the game on a stream or a website. You should know this all by now. We're, we're a season and a half into it. Our fans got to get better informed. And it kind of irks me and it kind of, that just irks me. When you put, po- like, say I post something on social media and it's hockey related, I-, I can back it up with like basic hockey facts. And then you make a comment that- that's like way out there, like, have you never watched hockey before? Hey, here's a good example. Against the-, the Los Angeles Kings played the Edmonton Oilers on Saturday. Now, Fox brought back that stupid, ridiculous glow puck shit from back in the 90s. As soon as I saw that, I was like, oh my God, my childhood, I'm freaking out. I hated that thing then. They came up with this stupid, transponder or something that they put in the pucks and then it the cameras would be able to see it it would glow the problem was it was always delayed like they did it for for fans that were new to hockey that said the puck moved too fast well for one you shouldn't watch the puck you should watch the players but the puck was too fast we couldn't see it so they came up with this stupid glow idea so on tv when you're watching it there's this like fuchsia purpley fucking glow like halo around the puck it was stupid well in like a retro day they brought it back against the king's oilers game and it was a big fat i mean it was nostalgic because it came back but it was stupid. I hated it then. I hate it now. But that's like what we needed back then to get fans to understand the game. Now, in 2019, we have social media. If you have a stupid question, you can get 100,000 or million stupid answers on the freaking internet. Go to Google. Type it in. Go, you know what you can do? You can probably even ask Siri or ask Alexa. You can be super lazy and just go, hey, Alexa. Bling. Uh, what time do the Vegas Golden Knights play? Bling. Uh, Nick, the Vegas Golden Knights play the New Jersey Devils at blah, 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 time. Come on, guys. It's 2019. Even for you older fans who might be technology challenged, anybody can ask Siri, anybody can ask Alexa, or anybody can type into Google. All right? That's enough with the fans. Moving on to chants. Um, there's been some people that don't like us chanting the, like, for instance, yesterday, Kincaid, Kincaid, Kincaid. Always three times. You suck. I mean, some people don't like that. I mean, Nashville's is way better. And they, they say we stole it, but honestly, all the places do the same thing. I mean, you think when the Sharks go to like Nashville or Winnipeg that they're not playing the same Shark videos that play on our Nitron over there? They all do the same thing. I get it. They all make fun of us. They make fun of our Golden Knight. They did in Arizona, although they kept bringing Elvis up. And as I mentioned last week, Elvis, I, I don't understand that I, other than Las Vegas, but I don't know. Now, my section, when we go on the Ed Bernstein penalty kill, we like to yell Ed Bernstein sucks. And it's no disrespect to Ed Bernstein. Ed Bernstein, the Ed Bernstein dude, the lawyer dude from TV, is probably a cool guy. 
And we're not even saying that Ed Bernstein sucks. We're saying that the Ed Bernstein penalty kill sucks. It sucks that we're on the Ed Bernstein penalty kill because we're playing a man short. And Ed Bernstein sucks. I mean, Adam Kuttner's just as bad. Glenn Lerner, a heavy hitter. I mean, I can name off a bunch of them. If, if you ever stay home sick from work one day and you watch like basic local Las Vegas channels, you're going to see all of them. And you're probably going to be like, Glenn Lerner is the way to go. Dial 877-1500. Or Adam Kuttner. He used to play hockey and he... Whatever. All I'm saying is, we need to come up with some good chants. I am all about a chant. The problem is, Go Nights Go gets old, and half the arena starts Go Nights Go, and then the next half starts, so we're not even saying it at the same time, and it's kind of like, Oh, Go Nights Go! Oh, Go Nights Go! Oh, Go Nights Go! Oh, Go Nights Go! Go Nights Go! Go Nights Go! Yeah, it's all over the place. We need to come up with an original chant. We also need to come up with a Vegas Golden Knights song. This is Las Vegas. This is the entertainment capital of the world. You're telling me that we don't have some musicians out there that can come up with a cool Vegas Golden Knights song? I mean, sweet golden nights, gold nights go, good times never seem so, so good, so good, so good. I, I mean, come on, really? Again, since this is a New Year's, the first episode of the New Year, um, it's 2019. We need to come up with a cool, fresh Vegas Golden Knights song. Doesn't need to be long because we want to be able to say it. Sing it, yell it, scream it, whatever we got to do. We need chants and we need a song. We need to figure that out. Finally, the, the, uh, the third topic in my what the puck segment is the stupid NHL pundits. Last year, I get it. We were a new team. They were like, oh, that's just fluke, fluke, fluke. Oh, they're still good. Fluke, fluke. Oh, shit. They made it to the Stanley Cup finals. But it was still a fluke. So coming into this season, when we struggled at the beginning, they were like, see, I told you all. Vegas Golden Knights were a one hit wonder. They were a fluke last year. Told you. No. It's because we had injuries and Nate Schmidt was suspended. Fast forward 20 games into the season when Schmidt returned. Look at our schedule now. Look at our record now. Look what happened. We're back to playing night hockey. Yet, the stupid pundits still are not showing us any love. Now, let's see. Buffalo Sabres at the beginning of the season went on a 10-game winning streak. They were all over the nuts of the Buffalo Sabres. Recently, Pittsburgh Penguins just lost their... They had like an eight-game winning streak and they just lost to Chicago. Yeah, believe it or not, Chicago beat them. They were all over their nuts. They're all over the nuts of the Anaheim Ducks right now for the opposite reason. They're all over the Anaheim Ducks because the Ducks have lost games in a row. Yet here's Vegas. Vegas kind of weaseling their way through the standings, picking up a win here, picking up a win there. Next thing you know, we've won six in a row. And we've had points in our last nine games. Now, remember those two games at the Fortress where we lost back-to-back in overtime? Still got a point about those games. It's been nine games in a row for the Vegas Golden Knights getting at least a point. Yeah, if you watch NHL Network, you go to any of the main hockey sites, Vegas Golden Knights, <laughs> other than the post-game highlights that they do for every team, like on uh, on the fly on NHL Network is a good example. You know, they spend, you know, three, four minutes on each game. That's it. That's all we've gotten since before Christmas. Since before Christmas, we've gotten little to no respect from the mainstream media pundits reference to Vegas Golden Knights. I'm telling you, go do an internet search. Go try and find something. Yeah, they talk here. They're all flower. Had another shutout. Oh, they, but... They show us no love. It's almost like they disrespect us. Now, last year, I was all about, go ahead, keep disrespecting us. Keep talking shit. Keep telling we suck. Keep telling us we're no good. The players, the Golden Misfits, fed off of that shit. Look what they did. They almost won the Stanley Cup in year one. Now we're fast forward to year two, and they're doing the same shit. I mean, when are they going to realize, yeah, the expansion draft was what it was. When are they going to realize that, hey, guess what? General Manager George McPhee is a smart dude. He made some smart roster decisions. He picked the right players. It's not our fault. Hell, when I was in Arizona last week, the guy kept bashing us. Oh, you guys suck because you have an all-star team. Well, no, we don't have an all-star team. Look, we're fighting to get Marchie into the all-star game right now. All we have is Flower, who was a three-time Stanley Cup winning goaltender before we got him. So we're not. We're a bunch of misfits. We are the golden misfits. Sure, we lost a few players from last year's season, but for the most part, the team is back. In fact, on paper, in my humble opinion, the team is better than they were last year. They're better than the Western Conference Championship team from last year, in my humble opinion, alone. So the pundits, it's 2019. Time to get your shit together. Time to start showing some love to the Vegas Golden Knights. Can you do that for me? Probably not. And honestly, that doesn't surprise me at all. All right, folks, that's a What the Puck segment from this week's episode of the VGK Bug Guy Guy podcast. Thanks so much for tuning in. And like I always say, if you're a fan of the VGK Bug Guy Guy podcast, please let one fan know. All you have to do is let a family member, let a friend, let a co-worker. Just say, hey, that dude, the VGK bug guy, he talks Vegas Golden Knights. He's, he's kind of funny. He's kind of an idiot. He's kind of a jerk. He's, 
He's an all round okay dude, but he has this podcast that he does every week. He talks recap, he talks Vegas Golden Knights news, rosters, stats, all kinds of stuff. You should check him out. That's all I need, folks. I only need one of you to tell one of your friends. And then hopefully they tell one of their friends. And then eventually the Bug Eye Guy podcast or whatever name I come up with here in the next week will go global. But there's probably a good chance that you folks listening to it right now are going to be the only ones that continue to listen to me. And I'm kind of okay with that as well. All right. So what do we got going on? We've got tomorrow night, the New York Rangers coming to town, take on the Vegas Golden Knights. The Rangers are on a bit of a slump. They've been playing kind of bad. We've already played them once this year. We beat them in overtime right after that Devils game. Then Thursday. Thursday's going to be a good matchup. Thursday's Pacific Division rival, stupid San Jose Sharks are coming back to the fortress. Brent Burns, Pavelski, Couture, Martin Jones, stupid Eric Carlson, 65. So that's going to be a tough game. Now, if you're planning to go to that game, that's a Frost the Fortress game, which means it's the last one of the season where everyone's going to wear white or road jerseys. We're going to be wearing our road jerseys, the white jerseys. If you happen to go to the game on Tuesday or Thursday and you want to come say hi, I'll be up in the smoking section just on the outside of section 217. Come up, say hi, say, hey, bug eye guy, what's going on? Or go, hey, bug eye guy, your podcast sucks. And I'll be like, really? You're a fucking tool bag. You come all the way to the fortress, you walk all the way out here to say hi to me, and that's what you tell me? But I'll still fist bump you anyway. Maybe next week, episode 26, we'll have a new name. Maybe it might be the week after. I don't know. Be on the lookout. Uh, check me out. Subscribe on YouTube. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'm on all of the social media platforms at BGK Bug Eye Guy. Thanks so much for tuning into episode 25. I really do appreciate it. Good luck to the Vegas Golden Knights on the next couple games. I'm excited they've won six in a row. It's been fun. It's been exciting. And I'm a happy, happy guy. Happy New Year to all my listeners. I really do appreciate it. I love you. And as always, go Bug Eye Guy. Go Nats Go!